Okay, today we're going to be looking at resolving the forces at other angles in equilibrium problems. Um, this is quite a challenging lesson, so we're going to take our time. Um, so let's consider some mass here and the force of 10 newtons in the vertical. And then we have, oh, it's going to be a straight line. It's terrible. Right, let's try that again. We've got the horizontal here. Okay. And then we have a force in this direction, force T at an angle of 25 degrees. And to be a right bigger angle, and a force here at 65 degrees. Now, although I haven't done it there because that's too big for 25 degrees, um, it is recommended when you do your sketches to try and as best you can to estimate um, the angles properly. Um, not because you would lose any marks in the exam, but for your own visualisation of the problem, it will just help you as you add more details if you've got a kind of, if, for example, that was more like 25 degrees. Um, <coughs> that's just a wee tip. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to try to resolve the forces into vertical and horizontal. So let's think about the um, horizontal first. So if we would look at the horizontal component of this one, we would have um, R times cosine 65 would be the component along the horizontal. Now because this system is in equilibrium this must be equal to T times cosine of 25 which is the component along here. There will be no horizontal component from the 10 newtons down here because this acts straight down the vertical and there'll be no horizontal component. Um, so this is the um, horizontal component there. Now let's think about the vertical component. The vertical component for R and T will be acting up. So we would have um, R sine 65 and now the, you're going to add this to the horizontal component here plus T sine 25. Um, because the R and T vertical components are pulling up, the vertical component for this is all is all down, it's all 10, it's 10 newtons. It's going to equal 10. Um, and they will balance each other out. The horizontal component, um, the horizontal component going up will be the same as that going down. Likewise, the sort of the vertical component going up will be equal to that going down. Um, likewise, with the vertical, the horizontal this way and that way will um, be equal because the system is in equilibrium. This weight is not moving. Now, we have so this is a vertical. We have two unknowns. We could solve a simultaneous equation. But that's going to be really difficult. Um, and as these kind of systems become more complex, they become really difficult to 
to do. So we're not going to solve um, for the, um, solve simultaneous equations to get the two unknowns fixed. Um, what we're going to take into consideration a force has no component in the perpendicular um, to the line of action. <coughs> this means if we resolve the perpendicular um, to R in the example R will not um, appear in the equation. <coughs> so we can solve for T instead. Um, as an alternative to drawing a right angle triangle, it may be easier to consider the angle between the force and the direction which you are resolving. <clears throat> when resolving parallel to a certain direction, we mark it as P. So say we've got... So this dotted line here, we're going to call that P. And then you've got the force F, and then you've got theta. Um, the component of the force F in the direction will be adjacent to the angle theta between the force and the direction P. Therefore, F of P can be found by the cosine of the angle. So um, F of P is here will be f cosine theta. Now that sounds quite complicated. Let us look. It will be easier to understand it if we actually go through um, and do a problem. So, a boat, we'll do a couple of problems, is held in equilibrium by three forces 10 newtons F newtons and 20 newtons as shown in this diagram I'm about to do Find F and theta. So let's draw this is our little boat and we're gonna have a dotted line up here and this is twenty newtons and it's at some angle theta that we don't know. Ten newtons is acting in this direction and we have F Newtons in that direction and this is an angle of 80 degrees. So we're given all this information. Um, so we're going to resolve the horizontally and vertically. Um, if we were to do, yeah, we were to resolve like we looked at in the previous example, all the different forces horizontally and ver vertically we would have f and theta as two unknowns. Um, so what we're going to do first is we are going to consider force perpendicular to f. 
So I'm just going to draw, here's F, and here's our 10 newtons, this is 80, and I'm going to consider this is perpendicular um, to F. So if we draw the dotted line here. Now we need to also think about this parallel to this to F here. So we're going to continue F along here and we're going to think of the the angle perpendicular and uh, parallel to this one. So let's draw another line down here. So this is right angles here and they'll make an angle alpha here. So now theta plus alpha will equal 80 because this has come right through here and that's just with the rules of angles. Okay, now we're going to resolve, so this here is going to be um, F here is going to be um, zero. So now we're going. To, this is not going to have a component of F here. So we're going to, to work out this line here, but um, using the tw ten. So we're going to use a sine rule. So ten times sine of eighty is going to give us this. So ten of sine eighty must be equal to the same part over here because they're parallel to one another which must be equal to um, 20 sine alpha. Therefore, alpha must be 29.5 degrees. And we know that theta plus alpha equal 80. So, so alpha, theta must be 80 minus 29.5 which is 50.5 degrees. Now let's consider F again. So let's consider this bit here. F plus the component of the 10 newtons acting along this vector here, so that would be 10 times the cosine of 80 must be the same as the component of this vector acting along this part here. So that would be um, 20 times the cosine of alpha. Um, because they're on the, 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 the things again, it's an equilibrium, so they all have to balance out. So we can now, we know what alpha is. Alpha is 29.5. Adding everything into our calculator, F will be, sorry about that, F will be 15.7 newtons. that. Um, let's look at another example. So we've got a block of mass 10 kilograms. And it's held as an equilibrium on a slope at an angle twenty degrees to the horizontal. by 
a force F acting um, at fifteen degrees above the slope. Find F and the normal contact force. So let's think about this. So we've got our slope. A little bit shallower. And that is at 20 degrees. And we've got a block of wood on this um, slope. And the block of wood has mass tensile. The gravity acts um, perpendicular to our ground. I'm sorry, this played up to me terribly. Um, and that's going to come down here. And that's going to be a force of 10 g, because our mass is 10 kilograms. And um, there's a force, and it's acting um, at an angle of 15 degrees above the slope. So this is, so we're going to draw a dotted line parallel to our slope, and we've got our um, force up here, and that there is 15 degrees. Now the contact force is, uh, is a reaction force of the, the block of wood sitting on our slope and it acts perpendicular to our slope. So we're going to have some force R acting perpendicular. Now, Right, I hope that's fixed it. We've had to um, update sketchbook and all the glitchiness has hopefully ended. Um, so, I've redrawn our um, diagram. Now, what I've shown you is so there's our block of wood, and we have the weight coming down perpendicular to the ground. Now, this is 20, the slope's at an angle of 20 degrees. This is perpendicular, so that's 90. So this means this little angle here must be 70. And the and if we take the um, perpendicular from the slope meeting here, this angle must um, be um, 20 degrees. So we're going to resolve... parallel to the slope. So we're thinking this angle here that would be parallel, the component of the, the weight of, of 10g parallel to the slope and the component of f parallel to the slope. So the component here parallel to the slope is this angle, this vector here. So it would be the f times the sine, no, cosine, wrong one, wrong one, cosine of 15. Oops. And that must be equal to the, the component parallel to the force from our 10g. So we have 10g and 20, um, sine of 20. And therefore we can work out what F is going to be. So F must be um, 35.4 newtons because everything's in equilibrium. So the pa force parallel, the, the component of the force parallel from angle F must be equal to the component parallel to the slope from um, 10g. Now we can use this to now work out our reactive force. 
So the reactive force is perpendicular. So let's resolve perpendicular to the slope. So R add together by the perpendicular component from F, so that would be F times the um, sine of 15, that's this one here, it's opposite our angle that's 15, must be equal to the perpendicular component from 10g, which is this part here. So it's 10g times the cosine of 20. Now we know that f, so f must be 10g cosine of 20 minus 35.4 times the sine of 15 which is 84.8 newtons. Um, <coughs> so yeah the thing to bear in mind draw your diagram and think about the different um, components of the forces that are acting perpendicular and parallel to one another um, and just take your time and go slowly. Hope that helps.